Yo, when I tell you this was the worst thing I've ever done to myself, <laughs> Kelly can concur because she spent the first three days wrestling with it. And then I spent the last three days wrestling with it. <clears throat> this is one of those tasks that I should have just gone old school and gone analog on it because it was a nightmare, just a total nightmare. I um, and I'll I'll walk you through some of the some of the nightmare, but it won't bore you with the entire thing. But uh, you know, you probably have seen a lot of uh, these AI tools. So we've got one. Oh, dang it! Yeah, okay. I'm going to show you this. So so I've got Fathom running in mine right now, and I've got Otter Pilot running in it. And I've tested out five of these beasts, and you know, quasi spoiler alert, I will tell you that the one I thought was going to win did not win. And the one I thought I was going to surely replace, uh, I'm, I doesn't look like I will. So anyway, um, I, I'm going to, uh, man, a lot of people uh, still showing up here. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll start to go through this. And uh, Kelly, if you'll keep an eye on the uh, the chat because I'm on it. Uh, I'm, I'm not not as uh, ambidextrous as I'd like to be right now. But anyway, so let me share the screen and just walk you through this thing. And I, you know, again, I know some of you can't turn on your camera. That's okay. The rest of you, if you could, that'd be cool too. I. I'm running two monitors here and uh, I can't necessarily see everything at the same time. So I'll do the best I can. But so here's here's what we did. All right. Um, and and if, if I, I get disjointed, it's because this this dadgum Zoom menu keeps getting in the way and I have to close it, move it out of the way. Y'all can't see it, but I can. It drives me crazy. If you've ever done a Zoom meeting, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So here's what we did. We we tested out Airgram, Fathom, Fireflies, Meat Geek, and Otter. Have any of you guys used any of these? Just curious. Yeah. Okay. Give me an idea which ones that y'all have used. Okay. So a bunch of you used Otter, Firefly, Fathom. Otter, Fathom. Yeah. Okay. Grin, you use Fathom. Okay. Fireflies, Fathom. Interesting. Does does uh, has anybody used more than one other than David Pittman? Jillian, you used meat geek yesterday and otter okay cool all right well you'll probably find this interesting then ah rich brooks rich talk to me you've, you've tried a few can you yeah sorry i was eating and i didn't think anybody really wanted to see that <laughs> <laughs> well i finished it's a day <laughs> yeah i've tried totally both. fine yeah i have um I've tried both of them and basically um, I've gone to Fathom just because I feel the AI summary has been fantastic, but I wanted to tune into this because I really wanted to see, um, I've heard some, some things about tools that create to-do lists at the end mm -hmm. of it, which Fathom mm -hmm. doesn't do. And I was kind of curious to see how good they were because I know that I'd love to start implementing <laughs> company-wide. I know for me, sales calls, yeah. And client calls, I'm using Fathom every time I get permission from a client, which has been 100% acceptance rate so far. To have those recordings and the summary has made my life so much easier uh, when it comes to going back at the end of this. Yeah. And if you don't mind me hogging the mic for 30 more yeah. seconds. Go the other it. thing is I started months ago interviewing some clients, ideal clients, so I can get a better understanding of our clients' needs. Mm -hmm. And What I ultimately want to do is start doing that again putting that into ChatGPT or Claude, looking for consistencies so I can develop much more accurate personas than I think what are passing for AI driven personas right now. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, you, you nailed it. Uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do as well. We have an interview process for uh, interviewing personas and, and extracting information from them. And then we turn around and we use AI to produce that 
that a uh, that whole persona. So that's a perfect use case for this. Um, we use it a lot to generate the to-do lists. And I know some of them are trying to create to-do list AI inside of it. And um, I'm not overly pleased with anybody right now. I'll just put it that way. Uh, so let me kind of walk you through it. Hey, Mitch is on camera today. Hey, Mitch, good to see you, bud. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right. Uh, pardon me? Or is that your background noise? Yeah, somebody's background. Oh, that's Michelle's. Okay, I'm on mute, Michelle. Okay. All right. So look, there are a couple of tests that I wanted to show you. <clears throat> and you'll you'll probably find this interesting. And I and I'm gonna kind of flag you through all the stuff that I did just to see what what really works as far as these things go and what really doesn't work. So you can see over here, um, I had to, and, and I, sh I should have shown you the original transcripts because as they come out, you know, we could probably do that and pull these transcripts. I had them, but some of them put them in a nice little Word document. Some of them make you copy and paste it into a document. Some of them just jam it all together. <clears throat> And that's what made it all the more frustrating to try to get it to analyze this stuff. So this is the crazy part. So in order to get this to work, you can see all these, these dadgum spreadsheets I got here. This is what I had to result or had to uh, resort to, to get this to work. <clears throat> I had to take the transcripts and I had to put them into a spreadsheet Okay, because so Kelly, what Kelly did was Kelly took all the transcripts, she took the best of it, she went through this particular meeting, and, and it was the meeting that we had as a CXO group on August the 11th. So we took the transcript from that because it had multiple speakers, a lot of this and that, you know, no to do lists from it, of course, but it was a good solid test. It was an hour long meeting, you know, they had to, we had, I don't know, multiple speakers in it going back and forth. And what I was looking for was how well did it track who was speaking? How well did it separate it? How well did it obviously transcribe it? Um, so there's a lot of things that go into it. The other is on the back end of the UI itself, I wanted to look at the summaries that they created and see exactly how well the, they did with those summaries. All right. Now, what I found was, and here's where I made my big mistake that I, I kind of was like a pit bull that just couldn't let go of a rope. Um, I tried to get AI to analyze AI. So I was trying to get Claude to do this. I was trying to get ChatGPT to do this. I was trying to get GPT with the code interpreter to do this. And you could take the... Um, the transcript and you can throw it into a, a lot of these things and it'll come up with a, a decent summary sometimes. But the, the problem is if it doesn't trans or translate perfectly, then you end up getting obviously bad results, right? So the question is which one's going to do it the best? And in order to do that, the AI, or at least to get AI to analyze it, the AI needs to know where a speaker uh, name is present and where their words are present. So it, it needs to be able to separate those, okay? And they all did it differently in the transcript. So one of them would put a colon after the name, one of them would put a dash after the name, one of them would just make it in bold, you know? So there's a, there's a headache there, especially if you're trying to get the AI to compare all of these things and see which one's right. So, you know, me uh, being the propeller head that I am, uh, I just couldn't let it go. I thought I have got to figure out how to get AI to analyze this stuff. And after Kelly wrestled with it for, I don't know, 16, 20 hours, uh, she's like, uncle, all right. So I like, okay, let me see what I can do. And, and all of a sudden I was starting to master these, you know, really uh, fancy um, prompts. Let me go find my prompt database. 
Yeah. So I started to go in and do these handy little prompts where I'm, I'm establishing a criteria. I'm giving it the request. I had a, a three stage thing going on. I figured out the chat GPT needed to align segments and a segment is a speaker and, a, and content. Uh, okay, Dave, I'll try to get to the, the chase uh, real quick though, before you leave. But um, so it had to align segments and then it had to uh, match or, or do a pairing match, which is pairing off the right person with the right amount of text. And so it just got to be crazy. And then I realized what it's trying to do is it was trying to match up line by line, you know? And so if one AI had, um, like, for instance, it had, it had Bob Miller, some text, Bob Miller, some text, Bob Miller, some text, John Munsell, some text, John Munsell, some text, right? Whereas another one would have John Munsell, a lot of text, Bob Miller, a lot of text, Bob Lyles, a little text, Mitch Gotro, one piece of text, right? And it would do all that stuff. So it, it was trying to align it like it was some kind of spreadsheet, you know, and and since they were unequal, it, it just wouldn't do it. It just kept blowing up and blowing up and blowing up. So then I realized, OK, what if I made it do a semantic type of alignment? Look at a block of text, see what the theme of that text was, and then go over to the uh, the AI note taker and see if that theme is present. Right. That was the theory behind the semantic pairing failed miserably so that didn't work after six hours of wrestling with it so um i was like all right well i i gotta figure out if ai is able to just tell me do the speakers line up you know and after wrestling with that and here's what i was like oh, i finally got it he was giving me these brilliant scores it was looking really cool i got um i got the uh, chat GPT with the code interpreter to actually build some nice little spreadsheets. I, I taught it to build a really cool Word document with the formatting and everything. I'm like, okay, well, I'm at least learning how to do some cool stuff with code interpreter. And then I said, well, just to be safe, you know, after wrestling with a few hours, let me run the exact same prompts in three different instances of code interpreter. All right, so oops, here we go. All right, so I had three different subscriptions running just you know to make it fair, right? And I would take the exact same prompt, upload the exact same data files. And you can see here, I'm uploading six different data files. One was the perfect translation and the others were all the, you know, the AI versions of it. And then I'd run it in another one and I'd run it in another one. Exact same prompts. It would go off the rails. And, and I was like, why? It's the same prompts, same data. You would think it would go through the exact same process, but it, it didn't. And so then I started, I started going in to analyze. Well, shoot, now that it's timed out. But uh, I was going in and trying to analyze what, what's it actually doing in Python and then it would go off the rails in Python. Anyway, like I said, after wrestling with it, I just decided, okay, I'm going to have to go analog and just eyeball this and figure out what the heck is going on. So I'll, I'll kind of start to share with you what I found. Now, by, by segmenting, uh, segmenting it this way, it was kind of helpful because I did notice that you had to be careful of line breaks and returns and all that stuff. And so you had to figure out a way to strip those out. Anyway, I learned some interesting things. At the end of the day, what I also learned was it's, it's, um, it's easier if you just take the document, turn it into a text file, upload it and have it create your, your summary and to-do list. But the only way to really get the best thing out of them is to have somebody like a Kelly <laughs> go in and manually do it and see if it's if it's right that's really the key so that's what i tried to do and hang on a second um so i want to i want to show you some of the features that to me are really important you know with these ai tools 
And because I have these aligned like this, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a piece of text that I know existed in uh, the AI bot, right? Or the AI note taker. So here, this one, this little phrase is in Airgram. All right. So then I'm going to go over here to Airgram and I'm going to use their search tool and I'm going to see if it will find that across all the other Airgram recordings I have. To me, that's a critical test, right? And it does, but look how it breaks it up. You know, I just, I want that exact phrase. And it's, and it's, just, it's getting a little weird on me. All right. But it gives it to me. Now I click on it in Airgram and it brings me to the transcript. But it does not bring me to the phrase in the transcript, right? Which is frustrating. Hey, John, would you try putting like quotes around that statement instead of just individual words like that? Just put quotes around it to see if it takes yeah. it as a yeah, let's see a, if it'll do as that. a single entity instead of breaking it up by the word. Yeah, do something like that. See what happens. Just see what, if it happens any differently. Nothing. No. Same, no. same drill. Okay. Still breaks yeah. it up. Okay. Yeah, still breaks it up. So anyway, that was frustrating. So now if I go over here to Fathom and I do the same drill with Fathom, I'm going to go pick some text that I know actually showed up. And I'll copy that. I'm going to go back over to Fathom. Here it, see, it sees it, right? Shows it to That's me again. Good. And now I can hit play. And down yeah. here, it's going to play it out. All right. Uh, which reminds me, I ought to turn on my computer sound just in the event we play some of this out. Okay, so it does it does bring it to you, right? Which is interesting. And then if I click over here, it brings me to the meeting, but it didn't quite bring me to the text, right? So it's an interesting deal. It'll play it out in that bottom right corner exactly where you want it, which is very cool. But if I go into the meeting, it, it doesn't quite do that. So I'm I'm giving it some bonus points for that. I still like the way that handled. All right. So hey John, there, go, John, there was there was a little search box right under that video right there. Oh yeah, yeah. If you paste it, if you paste it, it in there, right? Yeah, 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 I can paste it again and it'll find it. Sure. Right. Um, I'm just talking about in terms of clicks, you know. No, right. It does yes. it in one click and it'll play it immediately out. And, and so you don't have to jump in and pull the entire meeting right. out, which is a which is a neat little use case. Very bad thumbnail, though. Let's get out of it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so now if we if we take a look at Firefly, the Firefly is plural. Now let's go back over there. And we'll take some text that we know was in that one. All right. Let's take this. And we'll do this. I'm doing it without quotes, of course, just because I want to see what happens. All right. And it seems to spread it all out. All right. So just for giggles. No, now look at this. It actually says that it puts it in quotes. Right. Yeah. It doesn't. Okay. All right. But now if I click this. So it doesn't quite bring me to it. Now, I think when I recorded this, I didn't have the paid version, so it didn't actually record the video. But if I go and uh, let me get rid of the quotes and see what happens myself, but you see all the AI bots. I got five of them running. Okay, and, so it does. Uh, next week, I'm going to show you what. Uh, so it will bring you to the audio if you search for it in here, but going from the root search to find it across all of them, it won't bring you to the right piece, but it's close enough for government work, right? All right, so now let's take a look at Meet Geek. We'll do the same drill. We'll go to Meet Geek. We'll find some text, you know, and I'm kind of cheating. I'm, I'm giving it some early text just to see what would happen. Let me, let me take some that's later on in the game. And we'll do another search, see if it finds it. So it finds it, and then if I click on it, it brings it over here, and then I have to click over here to go view the meeting. It opens up in a whole new tab. 
and it does not bring me to the text. So then I have to go and search for it again. And then it finally brings me to it. All right. So again, not quite as smooth as I'd like it to be. It's way many. I, I'm, I'm an anti-click guy. This is too many clicks for me. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you got to remember all, all of them. Then you got to, then you have to do them, right? That's right. And then you have to teach somebody else. Here's how many right. clicks you got to do. All right. So we'll go over here and then we'll do the same drill for Otter. And I'll paste this and let's see what happens. <sighs> wow. Okay. Yeah, That's a totally, up. totally disastrous search. All right. Let's see if we can quote it up. No. Nope. Yeah. Oh no, that's better. Huh? That was better, wasn't it? It was. It looked like it didn't have it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Quoted. Using, using quotes and otter does work better. Yeah, I see it. But it, yeah, but it's bringing up the wrong one. It, it, this yeah, but it, like we don't need. Yeah, it got. Oh, it got them in man. order, but not all. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, how many times set. do I have to say we don't need that? I mean, geez, <laughs> I never thought that I would. This is a better phrase. I'm certain I haven't said that in a whole lot of meetings. All right, so let's try it one more time, this time with feeling. There we go. Brings you to it. And it brings you to it. Okay, so that's a bonus for Otter. Now, in terms of what actually happens, if I click on it, get to it. Yeah. What the heck? I know we didn't play any music in that whole thing, or did we? I, you you played. I thought you played yeah, like a yes, um, sample. Yeah, we did. Yeah, Maybe you I did. did. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I you guess did like I did. a sample constructed thing that was constructed yeah, you're right. and had music in it. Yeah. You're right. Wow. Okay. John, I thought you're just getting your Friday on a little. Hey, early. Right. A little yeah. early. <laughs> Yeah, that freaked me There was nothing okay. that cool in there on purpose. You're right about that. It was completely that's accidental. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But that's interesting. Okay, so that mm -hmm. at least all of them allow you to search across all of your, your contacts, which is helpful. I think for my money, Fathom works better because it brings you right to it. So from a user interface, y'all tell me if you agree or disagree. What do y'all think? Who's the winner? Fathom, Glenn's got a thumbs up on it. Anybody else have any thoughts on it? <laughs> it's on what I saw here, Fathom, but I haven't used the yeah. other ones personally. Yeah, you haven't used them. I have, yeah. I have done a lot of searching on Fathom for things. Yeah, me too. So that worked out for me. Now, I'm going to show you the, the other comparisons here just so you can see. Now, I took all of this stuff and then... In typical John Munsell fashion, I built pivot tables around it to try to figure out what the real truth was, right? <laughs> all right. And so I, I built the mother of all pivot tables here. It's just a series of them. And then I was like, all right, well, let's let's kind of rank it and see who's the winner. Now, I didn't subtract points because, look, here, for instance, Bill Smith, um, in the perfect transcript, he only had eight bytes of text or blocks of text. This one said he had nine. Bob, 16. Out over here, it said Bob had 23. So they're, they're, it's uh, without drilling into it and just figuring out what it did, um, I'm, I'm thinking it's just really a misappropriation of who said what, you know, and it didn't quite break it apart. Um, or it's that somebody talked over somebody else and it didn't split it up correctly. You know, and so it attributed a whole lot to one speaker. So that I think is what's going on when you see this, because you can see Bob talks 16 times here, 23 times here, 22 here, 86 here. Bob, you were just a chatterbox. Um, 11 here and nine here. So all of them are doing some weirdness when it comes to appropriating the speaker with the right amount of copy, right? Very strange. So as much as I wanted to dislike Fathom because of the, the inaccuracies that we keep encountering with it, the dang thing won this round too, you know? So I was like, all right, it's, it's doing a good job. 
Um, but we, I don't know, for the rest of you who have used Fathom, um, we find that it, it doesn't break apart speakers correctly with a lot of frequency. It doesn't transcribe the words correctly. I kept thinking that Otter was going to do the best. Otter stinks comparatively. First of all, unless you actually have some kind of voice coding for the speaker, it won't know who it is until you actually designate the speaker. And I think we went over that last time. You have to have this giant list of speakers that's ever growing, you know, and you can't do anything with that. So it's, it's, it's a really poor interface for that. And so what it ends up doing is it ends up saying speaker two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you have to manually go in and tell it who the speaker is. And it rarely will tag it all the way through. It'll, it'll get a bunch of them right, but there's so many that it gets wrong. And so you're spending an enormous amount of time on Otter trying to get that right, especially if you're trying to get a to-do list out of it or some kind of a commitment list out of it. You know, you're, you're better off paying a human to just sit in there. Dave, you said you've been using Otter about two years and hadn't progressed much. Fireflies does a better job. Yeah, I would agree. Fireflies did a better job than Otter. Everybody did a better job than Otter. But Fireflies broke it into so many pieces of text that I got worried about how that would work when you actually try to analyze it using any other tool. It just gives it, it gives the AI, like if you're going to take that transcript and you're going to push it into something else because you're not really confident with the way uh, Fireflies is doing it, I think it gives it too much information. And so it just messes with it, you know? So uh, that was the one thing I kept noticing as I was going through all of this analytics is the messages that the um, that chat GPT kept giving me. It was like, OK, this is too much information. I'm going to have to break it into smaller chunks. And then when it would break it into smaller chunks, it wouldn't break it, you know, at the end of somebody's spoken words. It would break it right in the middle of it which then created a, a Python tag, slash, backslash n, and then more text. And then if, if it cut it like right before Corinne said something, it would be backslash n Corinne. And then all of a sudden it would say, this is an unknown speaker, Corinne. So it was a, it was a total disaster. So my point is you, you have to figure out how to get it into a, the smallest amount of content. And I, my fear is if I were using Fireflies direct transcript, it's just way too much data for me to analyze, you know? So I had to change that around. Um, but it, it did have some interesting uh, input. Now, so let's go and take a, a look at how these things operate once you're actually in the meeting. So when you're in Airgram, and you can kind of see it, it works somewhat similar to fathom in that you can see the video, you can see the copy, and then you can click on it. Let's see if I go roll down here, we'll pick something. If I click on this. I'm actually traveling up somewhere near the Arctic Circle. in Canada. Okay, so it'll bring you to that spot in the video, which is nice. All right, so let's generate the AI summary in Airgram and see what happens. And while it's thinking, We'll go over here and we'll generate a summary in Fathom. And while it's thinking, we already got the summary inside of Fireflies. And I'm just going to kill this. Let's see. We have a, this appears to be the summary over here, which is weird about Meet Geek. It just pulls out highlights. All right, so if I go into Insights, which is a beta, I'm not sure how useful this is. You know, call sentiment, silence rate. I'm glad it's a beta because I just don't know how useful that actually is. Notes, that's for me to manually take some notes. Agenda, conversation. If I go back here, so 
I don't see a way to generate an AI summary in here. It gives me one by pulling out what it believes are highlights. So not a fan. If I go over here to this otter, I don't have a way to generate a summary, an AI summary. So I'm gonna have to take the transcript and manually do it, which I don't mind anyway, because my summary um, prompt gets more out of it. All right, so let's go back and look at these summaries. Still working, finished, already, already there, okay. So AirGram, do be slow. It's not really working. Uh, yeah, let's go to meet Greek's action items and just see what that's all about. Okay, where am I missing that? Uh, that was in the little filter dropdown over in the uh, highlight was section. It? Okay, yeah. thanks. Action, concern, fact, goal. Yeah. Those look interesting. So if I were to turn these off then uh, and just pull down, that's what it's telling. Yeah, that is kind of an interesting technique. Action items. Let's see what it says. Well, there you go. I did tell Paul. I would tell him, show him something interesting. Okay. Do another one. Let's turn that off and let's uh, see what it says is important. Apparently nothing was important. Did it have some tasks? Should submit the replay request to gain access. Okay. So that's actually kind of interesting. That's a different way to look at the, the summary though with, with this kind of filter. So I'm glad you pointed that out to me. By default, they're all turned on, but that's an interesting deal. Let's see, if we go back over here, it is now finished. And so this is kind of an interesting summary as well, right? It's got a bit of a summary here that tells what went on in it. Then it's got pain points. Team had a certain amount of fun explaining. Okay, the AI tool was not breaking down the, the script. Team found artwork to be subpar. Voice over a Steve isn't very good. That's kind of interesting. They pulled out some interesting things that we talked about. Opus clip. Okay. Sales objections. Huh. Question about the cost. Comparison. Question about free. I, I wonder, though, if this is just a default category or whether it thought we were talking about some sort of a thing in it made it as a category. I'm assuming it's a default category. Decisions made. Decision to use, decision to use. These are things we discussed. We didn't exactly make a decision, but we discussed doing that. Key takeaways, the team, and aren't y'all glad we're all a team? We explain all that. <laughs> The team is using Steve. So obviously it's not quite clear on exactly the purpose of the meeting or who we are. Searching can be used. So it's got some interesting stuff in here. Numerical data. Okay, that was stuff that we talked about. Action items. Team plans to analyze the effectiveness of bots. Team needs to refine the script. Okay. And then it's got chapters. So Airgram's got some interesting things here. The, the question though is really how useful is this? Now, let me just see, just forgive, edit summary, copy all. So if I copy it, okay, so I guess that's how you get it out into another document. Just for giggles, let's see. Yep. Okay, so it takes the takes that whole thing and plops it in there. All right. But I'm I'm I don't know. I'm not really crazy about that. All right. Now the same thing here. Okay, I want to just kind of show you something else. If I go over here to export, 
you can see with Airgram, I can download the transcript inside of either of these things. I can throw it straight into Notion, which is really unique, um, HubSpot or a Slack message. So that's a neat little feature. With Fathom, though, you just you can copy it into Google Docs, and it looks like you're you're basically copying, and then you're turning around and plopping it into something. So if I were to say I want it in a Google Word or I mean a Word document, okay, so it's copied it, but it hasn't downloaded it. The other tools actually download it. If I go over here and I try to do the same thing, I go into the share button, and I can copy it out to people. I'm looking. And I'm not seeing, y'all tell me if you see it before me, but I'm looking for a way to actually download the transcript. And last time I was wrestling with it, does anybody who's using Fireflies know that if you can download it, there's a button in here that I'm missing? It, 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 pardon me? I said, I don't see one. There's that yeah, little maybe. cloud with pointing it up, to, but that's just storage. So no, I don't yeah, see anything. Right. I see it on the very bottom of the tray. It's uh, a downloadable. Yeah, keep going down. You see the play. Oh, down right? here. Here we yeah. go. Ah, download audio, download. There you go. There it is. Thanks, Jillian. Appreciate it. Yeah. Download meeting summary audio transcript. If I do that, okay, there we go. Now it'll allow me to throw it into things and I can turn on that. Yeah, that's right. I forgot I did this before because I had to turn these things on. So just for giggles, we'll take a peek. I know those who have used it before know what this looks like. Meanwhile, while that's thinking, if I go over here, you can see that I can, I have two choices when I'm downloading this. Okay, shoot, now I gotta go download this. And then we'll bring it up. And that's what it looks like. So that's a Fireflies transcript. You know, it doesn't tell you what the meeting name is, doesn't tell you anything. It just literally just downloads the stuff. So the meeting name is in the name of the document. So you don't have any real headers up there. All right. So if I go over here to Otter and yeah, let's see, export, I want the speaker names, maybe I want that, oh, here we go, combine copy, there we go, combine all, all paragraphs into one, ooh, no, we don't want that, yeah, uh, we can remove the auto branding, do we, we don't need any of that, you can, and then we'll throw it here into a doc. So that's cool. So you can throw it into a text file or a PDF or whatever. We'll throw it in here just for equivalence sake. And I'm just going to throw it in the downloads folder. Um, maybe I don't want to do that. Order. Yeah. I'm going to do, uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. And there we go. So Otter makes it nice and pretty. But this is where it gets really tricky if you're trying to throw this into another tool to analyze. Because the tool has a hard time figuring out who is a speaker and what is content. So not a good uh, way to do that. All right. So let's see. Let's go meet Geek in it here. All right, so meet Geek, you can see what it does. It gives you some metadata, but this is the part that really frustrated me about meet Geek. I have all this junk in the front end. And then once again, I don't have a, a good way for AI to analyze this. So I have to go in and, and do some cleaning because I got you know, multiple speakers, the dash. So you can see what I had to do just to get this into a spreadsheet and parse all that data out was a chocolate mess. And then 
for this one, you know, it's just simply a cut and paste. So if I were to uh, copy it and then um, just so you can see the difference between the two, if I go pop up a new one. Come on, work with me. There we go. All right, that's the summary that we just copied. So let's talk about what the transcript looks like. I'm gonna get rid of the summary. It doesn't look like that because I, I just had all the formatting screwy, but you can see it gives you a little headline and then it breaks it down. And, and once again, now this one puts this at and the timestamp and then a dash and then the name. It, you know, AI will analyze it. Okay. But it's, you know, if you're trying to do something really tricky, it's not the right format to do that in, but it's, it's interesting nonetheless. Okay. So bottom line is if I were to take all of these things and Wrestle with it. Did we export this one or not? Did not quite finish this. And let's just do this one just so you can see the final formats of all of them. Okay, there he goes. Airgram puts their little logo in there. We told it not to in the other ones, but so they all have some unique features, but I think after spending all this time with it, and I'm gonna show you, you know, again, my spreadsheet. If I look at the spreadsheet, Fathom does a better job. If I were to show you all the analytics that I had GPT run, and by the way, it created this entire spreadsheet with all the tabs, et cetera. But here's how it ranked them. So, and, and it got all these wrong. This was the segment pairing and it had to correct it because it calculated it wrong. And this was the first time it did it. The transcription matching was incorrect. And again, it went, you know, in, in one, anal, uh, one setting that I was analyzing the exact same prompt, it gave it a 5% and then it turned around and gave it an 85%. And I'm like, okay, this is inaccurate as heck. So that wouldn't work. Speaker identification didn't work. Everything didn't work. It ranked Fireflies as number one, Airgram number two, Fathom as number three, based on obviously faulty data. So uh, the one thing was, it was interesting that it actually produced this spreadsheet. The bad news is it was, it was a bit of a hallucination. So you can see how it created all these little comparisons for me. Um, this was the test that started all this. You know, when I finally get it to do this, where it counted the number of times a speaker spoke, it was accurate. So I was like, okay, cool. Now that you're accurate, let me run all these other tests. And so I was thinking, oh, please let it be right. Wasn't right. So anyway, it was a swing and a miss, guys. <laughs> but it was an interesting exercise nonetheless. Uh, but it was, uh, it was, it was, not worth 70 hours, <laughs> that's all I can say. It wasn't worth that. But at the end of the day, I would have to say that I, I, as much as I didn't want to like Fathom because I'm not happy with the accuracy, I'm still going to stick with, with Fathom. And we're, you know, the prompts that we use to pull the information out of it, it just works. There are frustrating things about Fathom that you probably already know, and we talked about them before, but we're going to analyze this particular exactly. piece was part um, Bob and part me. I couldn't split it, but I believe, and I'm trying to think about which one it was. I think it might have been here. Um, yeah, I can, I know that it, I'm pretty sure it's this one. I, this one, I can like copy it and split it. And I believe in Meet Geek, I can actually split it as well. So from that perspective, that's a handy tool. When I see that it's overrun, I can just split it and rename who the speaker is. That's pretty cool. But at the end of the day, you know, in terms of speed, 
right? I mean, Kelly, you could probably speak to it more than I because she's the one that goes through this and tries to clean it up so that our, our transcript job is, is to are something that we can analyze. Uh, it's, it's cumbersome, but, but unless you do it, you're not going to get the right information out of it. We've seen things where the, the transcription, the word is so bad that it changes the meaning of everything. And that's the scary part about this. If you don't go through it and recognize that, that's a bad thing. The other thing that I've noticed is that none of them did a particularly good job at recognizing keywords like chat GPT, you know, in industry jargon, which was one of the paces that I put it through was industry jargon. It, it, you know, GPT just freaked out on that. Every single time it totally freaked out. It couldn't, it couldn't understand that. I even gave it the words to look for and it, and it couldn't do that. So that was frustrating. The content inclusion part, um, Fathom will just have total gaps in what it translates, which is frustrating. So um, Fireflies had fewer gaps, but I, I think it might be because if I go back to the speaker count, and if you noticed how many times Fireflies had it, and this is kind of a pro or a con, my suspicion is, and of course, I'm not the engineer that developed this, but my suspicion is that Fireflies is trying to break down more chunks so that it doesn't miss anything. And it, and it, it did a better job of parsing between speakers, I will say that. So there's fewer... Um, areas where you notice somebody overlapped something, something else. So yeah, Glenn, which one had the best transcription? It's, it's, it's impossible to say because of the fact that there was um, this misattribution of speakers, you know, um, and the fact that some of them missed text entirely. And the fact that some of them uh, where you had multiple people talking, it, it tripped over everybody. I, I wish that I had an answer on that, but I unfortunately don't. I uh, because they all had messes, and I and I I kept trying to find a way to do a legitimate comparison. And I think if I'm going to put my um, my votes on it, as much as I didn't want to, <laughs> I'd have to say Fathom was one. I think it's kind of a toss up between Fireflies and maybe Airgram. And then I'm going down the bottom to maybe a Meat Geek and an Otter. I think Otter really failed miserably. Um, there are other tools that you can use where you can upload audio files and it'll do a transcription. But the problem is it won't identify the speakers and now you're screwed again, right? So that's, that's the hard part of it. Yeah, guys. So the bottom line is there's still a lot of golf left in this particular market. So I'd love to know your all's thoughts, those who have played around with it, uh, especially if you play with more than one. Jalen, have you got any ideas on that? I felt like Otter, the summary wasn't what I needed, uh, mm -hmm. but I just forwarded you an email of my Meet Geek and I've only used it for three meetings thus far. Oh, yeah. so, far the, so far, the email summary is a very good uh, summary that I've been needing and it actually sent out to all the team members already. And so while I've been on this, other people received it, even if they had to drop early. So I do like that factor, but to your point, is it actually capturing all the things that I thought were important? Mm, uh, not completely, but yeah, you're welcome right. to share the summary and take a look at it. Okay, Otter, I just thanks. couldn't figure out. Yeah, I I thought the otter was going to be the one that that nailed it, but it just kept getting worse and worse. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> the other ones, like I said, they all have pros and cons. And the thing that we use it for, because we can't get any one of these tools to give us the right kind of summary. Because what I'm looking for is, well, I think I probably showed it to you before. We have a prompt that actually gives us a summary of the meeting, gives us commitments by everybody who was speaking in the meeting, and then we'll create an email that goes out and summarizes it all. So, uh, yeah, sorry, Rich, what were you saying? We'd love to see you re-examine this for the back yeah. nine. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a, 
That's not a bad idea, right? Come back and look at it in a substantive amount of time, you know, when there have been enough updates done to it, because it's going to change fast. Yeah. We all know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm waiting for too, Rich. You know, I'm, I know that, well, Fathom is free, so it's kind of hard to argue, right? It's kind of hard to complain about that's something right. that's free, right? <laughs> right. Um, the rest of them are costing some duckies. Yeah, free for now. They're they're trying to sell us on a team version, and I'm like, I, I don't need a yeah. team version, right? That's that's really what they said. They said they intended to stay free from now on, but the, to make the value of the team version enough yeah. value so people will move to it. But that's uh, yeah. Yeah, they're going to have to because they they have made it a little bit challenging for us to use. Like uh, Kelly can't get access to the video because it's tied to my uh, Microsoft login, which is you know frustrating. So that's that's kind of their way to lock you in on a team. Mm -hmm. But um, I would I would I would say all of them will have a a free version, but little by little the the um, the features that you get for free are going to make you beg for an upgrade, right? And I'm not really sure exactly um, where this will go. Like, like you say, Rich, six months from now, I will be looking at it for sure because the, the more they get good at actually extracting the, the meaning behind a conversation and the, the, um, the things that you need to execute after the conversation, that, that's when it's going to start getting uh, really interesting. But right now, what we've been using it for and throwing it into chat GPT, uh, it, it does the job, but we do have to proof it. And no matter which one we would use, we would have to proof it. So anyway. Still a hell of a lot faster than just having a note taker by themselves or you trying to take notes as a part of the meeting. So yeah. Well, yeah, that's to me mind. is the is the thing. I like to be able to pay attention, you know, to the conversation without going up, taking notes, and then have to look up and go, what'd you say? I was writing notes, right? So that's the part that I like the most about it. So it, it's it's helpful in that respect with, without a doubt. Um, it does speed things up. They all have uh, their advantages in, in that regard. But to me, I don't know. Not I, There's a clear loser. <laughs> but the the edges in terms of who's the winner really boils down to whether or not you like the the user experience um and that's where i, I have to give points to to fathom the transcription is a little dicey on on either end but i don't know i can't wait to see it again in six months but i tell you what i'm, I'm not going to try to get chat gpt to do the analytics i'm just going <laughs> to eyeball it myself <laughs> have to wait until 5.0 comes out <laughs> yeah exactly john hey, next yes Bob. It says, have you or anybody else on the call noticed that if it's only two people participating in the conversation that it's it's very accurate and the more people you add in it, it gets exponentially uh, uh, worse. Yeah, the more you have the opportunity for somebody to talk over somebody else, the, the worse it gets. Um, and the other is, uh, like I tried to analyze, but just couldn't quite get it to do it without me actually manually doing it, is the, the industry terms, the, the proper nouns, like when you're talking about a company, the odds of it actually recognizing that as a company name, especially with all the weird company names we got now, you know, it's kind of like trying to remember the name of the latest pharmaceutical drug that gets advertised on TV. They're just throwing a scrabble board out on the playground and trying to pick letters out and coming up with a new word. So uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I wish I had a, a, a clear definitive answer but like I said, I, I for now I'm going to stick with Firefly. I'm sorry, with uh, Fathom, and I know that I, I, I at least have one more month with uh, Meet Geek and Fireflies and Airgram. I might play around with them, but I'm I'm going to probably shut them all off. But I just for now, I think my user interface with this is better. I'm dying to know where they are with the uh, the transcripts. And these guys are interesting. They're, they're responsive on the, uh, the help side too. I've had a couple of conversations with them, which is really cool. Meanwhile, guys, next week, 
Bob, I don't know whether you got my agenda thoughts, yeah. but Bob wanted to talk <laughs> yeah. about innovation and AI. So maybe, Bob, if you want to chime in. Well, this is your thoughts this, on this, that? this is just something that John and I were talking about, and I told him it would be a good, maybe good to put the question out in front of the group because we don't want to do something that's not of any value. But, um, uh, you know, John is coming at uh, AI from a marketing perspective. And he sort of just asked, he says, well, what do you think about coming at it from a technology perspective to explain it more? And I says, well, for me, that's fine. But I think the majority of the audience right now is kind of marketing spent, but I, I'm happy. I'm happy to talk about that. Also, um, you know, the, what I, what I told John, I was, I'm teaching a class at UL this semester, just one class and it's on innovation engineering, which is a process of taking an idea to commercialization. So there's some content there that's got some cool tools in it. But that was really what John wanted to um, wanted us to see is if anybody was interested in learning more on the technology side, not just the use of it as marketing, but just in general, not to be in every not to be in every session deal, but to be a session periodically in the mix. But um, you guys should definitely give John feedback on whether or not you're interested yeah. in that. So. Does that sound like something you'd be interested in? Because Bob's doing some extra or some really interesting things in terms of using AI for spurring innovation that anybody have any interest in going down that direction next week well you can send it to him anonymously you don't have to be on the record it's okay yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm interested in going down that route being technology okay. so for a reference guide technical writing improving your writing etc those kind of and, and getting messages out technically um is, is that well, well, one of the other really interesting things that Bob and I talked about that we use it for is actually using AI to help you come up with ideas and massage yeah. the ideas. You know, right. that's a really interesting use that a whole lot of people haven't really uh, tapped it to do. And we've been playing around with several tools, Claude being one of the ones that I really, really kind of like. So. I, I end up playing around with three different tools to, to get what I want, depending upon what I want. Like if I'm writing uh, a certain type of copy that um, I know I just want to crank it out, I'll probably jump over to Cod or Claude. Other times, if I need it to a little bit more detailed, I'm going to go over to GPT. Um, I've noticed some unique things about GPT, though, but um, some make it strong, some make it weak. But using it for idea generation is a really good use case. And I think we'll probably explore that quite a bit next week. So anyway, guys, I appreciate your time again. Thanks for joining us. I was about security in this open model. You know, mm -hmm. how, how do you do that monster? Yeah, we could talk yeah. some about that as well. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. no, that's a good idea. We'll, we'll do that because there, there are some interesting things coming out about that right now. Um, and I noticed some of the, um, like, for instance, I'll probably spend a little time going over terms of use in a few of these things because some of them tell you what they're going to do with your stuff and others yeah. tell you we're not going to do it. And some of the new things that are coming out are should make you nervous when you see what they're going to do with your stuff. So uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll leave you in suspense on that because <laughs> I got a, two, two companies and I, I looked at it and I was like, whoa, this is really going down a bad curve. So, all right, gang. Well, y'all have a great weekend. Thanks again for joining us in. We'll catch you next time. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, John. Thank you.